So good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Thank y'all for coming. So for this workshop, we're going to be doing a college student life panel. My name is Elizabeth Evangelista. I'm one of the co-founders for CCMP. And then I have here my colleague. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Megan. I'm the blog editor for CCMP. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for if we have any new students, I see familiar names and some are new names. So just to give y'all like a heads up and some of our panelists a heads up of who we are. So we are CCMP. We're recently, we're, we're a new program, right? We started this September. So we're, this is like a whole new thing. But ultimately like who we are is we're a group of undergraduate students and recent graduate college students who share the passion of mentoring and helping students explore their college and career option in hopes of helping them take the best path that's best for them right in the future. Our goal essentially is to provide the necessary resources and guidance to high school students to support college readiness, career advice, and preparation for post high school life. Our audience, so we're all about college and career mentorship. So we do try to target high school students. Initial, initially, we targeted 11th and 12th graders, but we've kind of just opened it up to all high school students. So all high school students can take advantage of our academic and mentorship resources. They are virtually, so that's a good thing that like because of COVID, we can still keep in contact with these students. And then kind of just some benefits if you're new and you're kind of like, like, why should I join CCMP? Uh, we do have one on one mentorship, academic and career based workshops, but sometimes they go outside of like that we can do like bonding stuff and um, mental health workshops. We help with college applications and PIQ support. You can build community with fellow college bound students. So not necessarily students at your school, but we have students from all like a different, from different high schools. So you can build community with them as well. And then, you know, resume builder, you can put this on your resume and it's free to all students. So that's the good thing. All our services are free and anyone's welcome to join. Maybe. If any, sorry, I realized I was muted. If anyone's interested in becoming a mentee, I'll drop the link to the Google form. It's a very quick Google form. It's just to like know your information and see what you expect to get out of this program. Um, you can go next. Next. <laughs> okay, and then here is our social. So we have a website. Let me also drop the link to the website. Um, this is where we have like our program outline. Uh, we have our events, we have a calendar for our events. You can get to know each of the mentors personally. We have like a description for all of us. We also have the Google link to become a mentee in that in the, on our website too. And then you can contact us. Uh, there's also our about info. And then for Instagram, Ms. Elizabeth runs our Instagram. She posts a lot to remind you about workshops. We post on our stories. And then our YouTube, this is where we post our recordings of our workshops as well. So in case anyone couldn't make it to a certain workshop, you can always check out the video. And then next. Um, so this is just some college resource links. So all mentees have access to this. And we just thought it'd be nice to like put it here as a reminder. So within us co-founders and mentors, we are a big group of people and we all know different things. We all come from different schools. So this is kind of what we, put in some resources that we think would be useful to all like to all our students you know I come from a Camino in Dominguez Hills but like everyone else comes from different UCs and CSUs so if any mentees um, just a reminder there are resources already here for you to y'all just kind of scroll through on majors and um, campus programs and all that stuff and I believe we have the link if you want to put it in the chat to Megan like this link right here unless it's like a hyperlink But if anything, we can put it after. Okay, I put it in the chat. Sorry, I always forget that I'm muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, and then this is a dorm list that my friend, when I was the first year, I had, there was like this Facebook group. So I go to UCSC and there was this Facebook group where people were reaching out to us to become mentors for us. So one of the mentors that I had, he compiled a great list of things. If I don't know if any of you are seniors or plan on moving out of your house when you go move to college and into a dorm. 
uh, I posted the link in the, the chat. It's a list so that when you move out, like if there are lots of things that you might forget or like might not consider, like I don't know if any of you think about like a mattress topper when you're moving out or like, oh yeah, you can click on it. <laughs> or like bed sheets, like having a pair of extra bed sheets or like, I don't know, just small things. But I utilized this so much when I was moving out, I was like, dang, that'd actually be a great idea. So yeah, lots of things to consider. Very helpful, especially when you're moving out and you're like packing all your stuff, you can do like a checklist. Okay. okay, so we now we're going to go into our panelists. Um, every we have a couple of panelists here from different schools, so they're all kind of just gonna like share stuff about themselves. If any of our students have any questions, um, maybe save them towards the end. Maybe just kind of jot down some more your questions so you won't forget. That way, everyone has a chance to share about themselves, and then towards the end, we'll have time to answer questions and stuff. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan Salvado, and I'm an Oak Community College student. Oh, this is my junior, this is my third year, so that makes me a junior, which is be my last year before I transfer. Uh, my major is sociology and my minor is Chicano studies. Some extracurricular clubs that I have been part of would be the Puente Club. So in the Puente Club, our goal is to help um, El Camino students transfer to a four-year institution. So we gather up, there's tutors, there's mentors, and we just all have that same goal. So it's like a great little family vibe thing. Um, in addition, teach at El Camino. Teach El Camino is a program that helps um, students navigate resources if they want to become a teacher, a TA. So it's just a great program that literally sends you out like internships information, job opportunities on email, and it's a really great source. Um, another extracurricular would be volunteering at my church. So in my local church, there's annual fairs held every year, obviously because of COVID, everything shut down. But there's, um, so what I'll do, I'll go to my local church I'll volunteer in the health fairs and I'll help them set up, bring things down. So it's a good way to um, give back to your community. And then lastly, uh, the Warrior Pantry. So I volunteer at the Warrior Pantry, which is a, it's like a food bank at El Camino College that just gives you guys, the students food, toothbrushes, um, all these amazing items that as a college student we need. And it's cool because it's all free. And so the funny part about that is that I volunteered for a week and then a week after I got offered a job. So now I work there. Um, some resources would be um, further work study job. So at El Camino College and like other, other, co other colleges, there's further work study programs. And so what I did, I applied for further work studies and now I work at the work factory. So as an incoming college student, my advice to you guys would be um, apply for further work studies. Uh, further work studies, all these jobs opportunities, they work around your schedule. They're, um, they're not, they're not too tough on you if you tell, if you give them a week in advance, hey, like I have a final, I need to study for this. They're easy on you and they'll give you that week off. So my advice would be try further work studies. Um, in addition, use some college resources. So I myself have used, have used these resources, which would be mobile hotspots. It's all free. Um, you get tutors, computer labs, and a great resource now that El Camino offers would be that since COVID happens, there's a lot of students that don't, don't have access to internet or computers. So what they do is that they lend you a laptop with a mobile hotspot for the semester. And all you have to do is give them your school ID and it's, that's it. And it just give you all these amazing resources. Um, scholarship opportunities. So at El Camino College, they gave a variety of sorts of scholarships. I myself was discouraged the first year. I didn't apply to a scholarship. I was like, why would I be, you know, why would I be the chosen one? But the upcoming years I applied for scholarships and I was awarded two scholarships. So my advice would be use these resources. There's a lot of scholarships that don't get claimed because people just don't apply to them. Um, lastly would be volunteer opportunities. There's a sorts of volunteer opportunities at El Camino College. I myself have a list of volunteer opportunities. If you guys are interested, I can forward them to you guys. And at the end of the day, volunteer opportunities are very um, beneficial. Uh, first, it makes you look good. Then you're just giving back to the community. And then once you give back to the community, you just meet these new people, you network. And at the end of the day, you might get offered a job there, you know? You never know. So I advise you guys to use these volunteer opportunities. Uh, my experiences would be, um, I have worked multiple jobs. 
And it, um, my advice for you guys was, if you guys want to work multiple jobs, it's cool, but just be smart with it. So the way I did it, I was afraid of work study. And in the side, I was a soccer coach. And so the soccer coach only consists of one, two hours. So you just have to be smart with like the way you choose your job. Don't choose no like nine to five and like just over like overwhelm yourself with just school and then work. Just be smart with the work choice, if that makes sense. And then um, community, oh, I can't really see, sorry about this. Okay. So some experience I have as well would be at, so at, I recommend college, the Warrior Pantry, where I work at, there's a lot of food that doesn't get claimed. Unfortunately, we have to we have to throw it away. So what I do is that all the food that's going to expire, I gather the food and I just go to my community. And I look for homeless people who are in need of food and all these um, amazing items that they give us as students. I myself just give them to the people in need. So it's a good way to give back to the community because of COVID, there's a lot of people with financial needs. And so just giving back would be the best um, as a human being. And then lastly would be um, uh, another resource that El Camino has would be the North Cal trip. So El Camino, they um, have a trip every year, I believe. And so they take you on a, on a bus with like about like 80 students or 100, and they take you to North Cal schools, would be, uh, which would be Berkeley, Davis, um, Merced, and all for free. They literally pay for your hotel and they pay for your food. So it's a good resource because you get to explore all these schools that I myself wouldn't have thought of, that I would have stepped in. So at the end of the day, my advice would be just use all these college resources because at times we don't know that these resources are available until we navigate them. And if you guys are planning to attend any community college or El Camino specific, just reach out to me. I can help you navigate further work studies, um, job opportunities, and all these um, resources, like I mentioned, mobile hotspots, computers. And that would be it. Oh, and one last advice. Um, I know this is not um, related to college or anything, but I advise you guys to start your credit now. You guys are 18, 19 years old. Start your credit now because in the future, it's going to be very valuable. So I'll give a floor to, some, to the next um, person. Thank you. All right. So if you have any questions for Jonathan or community college in general, just kind of jot it down and then um, at the end, we'll address them. So next we have Stephanie. Hi everyone, um, my name is Stephanie. I am an alumni from California State University, Dominguez Hills. Um, I majored in child development with a concentration in juvenile delinquency. Um, and going along with the extracurricular, I remember even before joining Edma, uh, Edsa Sorority, um, I remember always being that student like, okay, I'm gonna go to class and then I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go to class and I'm gonna go home. And I was always just like, I'm tired of this routine. I wanna be more involved with school. Um, I feel like I'm not getting the whole college experience. And I was a student who at the beginning was lacking a lot with my academic grades. I was always just like friends, um, which is not the best option. So when I did end up joining the sorority, I feel like it opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, kind of just figure myself out. I feel like in high school, you're one person. And then when you get to, to college, you're like, oh, wow, like I'm meeting so many different new people. Like I'm getting to know more about myself just because you're more independent once you're in college. Um, so when I joined this, I feel like this was um, an organization that really kind of forced me, not, not in a bad way, but they were kind of like, you need to have a specific GPA to be considered an active member. And which is also why being um, going Greek or like being in a fraternity sorority kind of gives you a higher chance of, they have higher graduation rates. So I feel like because of that, it helped me graduate because like I said, like I was just a student who was like, go home and work, go home or school. So once I joined it, I was like so involved with different things. I was always on campus um, doing tabling. I would do a lot of community service, which helped me when it came to my resume. Um, a lot of employers are looking for community service or for you to have a leadership role, um, as well as it opened me to network with other people which is how I got the current jobs that I'm at. Uh, one quote that always stuck with me was, your network is your net worth. So meeting these people, I was open to new positions uh, where I met Elizabeth, where we are gear up student advisors, as well as I'm a program leader that works with children. Um, one of the resources that I would like um, tell you guys to go to is the Office of Student Life. 
this is an office where they have all they have multiple lists of extracurricular activities that the campus has at all times and they give you different organizations and as Jonathan said the where the warrior pantry something similar to that they know that sometimes students are in need of financial help so they give you that extra food like here's some macaroni and cheese or a cup of noodle but trust me it'll help you sometimes and it, they just give you like a safe space for you to do homework and some as well uh, maybe you don't want to go to the library so they have an open space for students to be there and just meet other students um Part of my experience was that my last year, I was volunteering at the Long Beach Women and Children's Hospital um, for an internship, which employers also look for. If you did any internships or have any previous experience in your major before applying to the job. So sometimes when you're looking at these different jobs on online, they're like asking for experience, even if it's just six months to a year. But having that experience really does help because you're like, I'm already familiar with it. You don't need as much training um, if you already have that experience and you know how to work with people. Um, I was working two jobs and I was also a full-time student um, as well as being involved with the sorority. So my biggest advice is get involved. You're gonna get the whole, the whole college experience and it'll really it'll be everything. Thank you. Alrighty, so our next panelist is Sierra. Take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Sierra and I'm a junior student at Cal State LA and I'm actually a transfer student. So I was at LA Harbor College for about two and a half years. And what made me pick Cal State LA is that I was able to take a college tour in October of 2019. And then I learned that the major I was applying for received like a million dollars in funding. And then I learned that they have a cross-cultural center which supports um, students who are like um, Asian descent, um, students who are black, Latino, people who are queer, people who identify in the LGBTQ plus community. They have that resource on the second floor and they have like different rooms and they have mentors there. And it's just a safe space for students to connect and feel supported. And they spread awareness also about social injustice, uh, social justice, sorry, and other things that are going on. And I felt like that was really important for me when selecting the school. So I picked Cal State LA and my major is TV, film and media studies. Some extracurriculars I'm involved in, like on the side, I do photography and then I do videography too. I was able to help a program at LA Harbor create a promotional uh, video and I've done volunteering before and I think it's really important. I think one of the panelists um, said, you know, being shy and like finding yourself and coming out of your shell, it's just really important not to put too much pressure on yourself, but at the end of the day, it's important, you know, to get as much as you can out of your college experience. So don't be too shy, you know, reach out to your instructors and professors, go to office hours if you can. And um, I was um, at like a workshop a few days ago, a virtual one at school and a student who identifies as trans, they told one of the mentors that a professor they had made like a disrespectful offensive comment about the use of pronouns. And I myself, like in high school and college, I've had a few bad experiences. Where I've heard teachers say things that were inappropriate. So like, don't be afraid as well to reach out if you aren't comfortable in the classroom because teachers are supposed to be there to support you no matter what they believe in at the end of the day, that type of stuff should be kept to themselves. So like, if you have an instance, uh, if, you, if you're in a situation where you feel uncomfortable by a classmate or a teacher like please don't be afraid to reach out to someone on someone on campus and tell them hey this is going on or even try to make a complaint because at the end of the day you need to get the most out of you can from your college experience and you should be in a positive environment so you know don't be afraid to speak up and if you join a club try to do your best to get the most out of it if it doesn't work out I'm sure you can find something that will. And some resources that I know about, one of them is called uh, the CSU Entertainment Alliance. And that program connects 
faculty, students, and alumni with jobs for people who are interested in the entertainment industry, such as myself. So um, it supports all, of course, of the 23 campuses, and they have an Instagram page, and they upload job positions, and they post information about internships and workshops and virtual events and also film festivals. And that's something that a lot of people are doing now because we're doing distance learning. So check out those pages if you can and see what you're interested in. If you're into like uh, media and film and TV and then Pipelines Mobile is another resource and they um, connect underrepresented uh, talent to the industry so I believe you could be like 15 years old and you can sign up on the app and then it'll like gear you towards job positions and training and that's another good resource for students who are interested in creativity tech and entertainment and as well like you can look up whatever school you go to after high school you can go to the web page of your school and see what resources they have to offer. You could check them out. And then you can also see uh, what they post on social media as well. That's another um, thing that's important to figure out You know what, what's gonna work for you and what's gonna serve you best, what you can get most out of the campus. And experience I have includes, I've done a work study and I've had a job outside of school. And I volunteered at um, a film festival February of 2020, right before the pandemic hit, I volunteered at the Pan-African Film and Arts Festival for two days, and I had a good experience. It was new and um, a different environment because I'm dealing with, you know, customers who are trying to watch these movies, and some of them were rude, some were nice, but at the end of the day, I was able to keep um, in contact with one of the supervisors, and, you know, I've updated him on how I'm doing, and, like, um, it was mentioned, the panelists mentioned before me, you know, your net, your net, your net, sorry, your net worth is your network. Sorry. Your neck. Your, your network is your network. Sorry, I have like <laughs> such a bad brain. <laughs> I'm really sorry. That comment is true, you know, so keeping in touch with people who are nice and people who you know, notice you have a different personality. You want to be able to stand out, you know, and like be punctual and be resourceful and, you know, don't be afraid to communicate because those people could help you get an internship. They can help you get a job. And I applied to four paid internships and I have been denied to all four of them and I'm not discouraged. You know, I recently talked to a professor and he gave me advice and it really stuck with me. So he also said, you know, he would help me as well. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to your instructors and I've done social media managing too when I was doing work study at LA Harvard College I was able to help some of the programs post on their Instagram pages and I took photos as well so my main advice is don't be afraid and certain things may not work out how you want them to but at the end of the day things are going to happen how they're supposed to so you just have to do your best to push through adversity, whatever you're dealing with at home, whatever you're dealing with in your personal life and what you're dealing with in your school life. Just do your best to overcome those challenges and to create and cultivate, you know, like a good support group and, you know, just shine bright and do what makes you happy at the end of the day. Some students, they end up changing their major. I know parents get disappointed or um, you might be, you might be disappointed in yourself too. So, you know, just do your best and do what makes you happy at the end of the day. Alrighty, thank you so much, Sia. Our next panelist, we have Talia. Talia, are you there? Oh wait, I, I had my I had myself on mute. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Oh hey y'all. So my name is Celia Castillo. I'm representing UC Davis. I'm a second year transfer student. Um, I did graduate from El Camino College, so I'm alumni. So I'm pretty happy to see some El Camino people here. Um, so I'm a sociology major. 
Um, I minored in education. So some of the extra um, curricular curriculars I'm involved is with the diversity leadership program on campus. So for that program, it's just teaching individuals like about diversity, about inclusivity, like how to be a, a leader in a workspace. So it's very important to you know be inclusive, like with the whole situation going on nowadays. So be educated um, for us to be able to talk about like important topics and whatnot. So I think that's very like big during our time period. I think it's very important. I encourage everybody to like get the sums involved and like speak out and like advocate and whatnot. Um, so some of the resources that I have used on campus is definitely the undergraduate research center and their internship and career center. So for the internship and career center, I was able to like apply for the Washington program and they help students um, get internships like Washington DC or like local areas. Uh, so because of COVID with the whole situation, like they allow students to basically internship anywhere worldwide. So I think that's a really cool resource that's available at Davis. Um, as for like the research center, um, right now I'm doing research with like um, with the Southern LA community, by impoverished you know, um, communities, how like there's like insufficiency in like food resources. So, you know, like um, it's nice to have like a center like that because like if you're interested in, and there's like professors or, you know, any research available that's not there, but you have your own and you're like interested, they'll definitely help you and like, you know, navigate you through the whole process or like redirect you to somebody of that sort. Um, but yeah, so during this whole experience, like I think the biggest takeout is like, making connections, uh, like as other mentions, like these connections are everything, like these individuals, like, you know, like I was mentioned previously, like um, before, like these people could help you get jobs, internships, like you get to know many individuals. And sometimes like, trust me, like many students are like, well, I don't have the grades for this or I don't have the major for this, but sometimes all you need is a connection to like get where you want to be. And trust me, like I am like, there right now. Um, so moving on to my experiences where I'll share a little bit more is where I overshadowed like Cancer Gary May over spring quarter last year. So that was like a really dope experience. I got like the insiders of like what goes behind like institutions. And I think that's a very important aspect where it's like you have, have the student's perspective and then we have like the admin's perspective. So, you know, just making that connection. So um, during my time at Davis, it's kind of hard managing like in the quarter system since very fast paced, being a full-time student and working and being involved. So use your time wisely, don't overwhelm yourself, keep your mental health, physical health, your number one priority. Like if you're overwhelming yourself and you feel like it's too much, it's just, you know, just pause something, work on yourself, you know, get it together and just keep on going. Like that's the best advice I could give, like, but always like keep yourself at first, like, your mental sake, your physical sake, like for you to be able to continue because especially with COVID, like I just want to express that like so much, like we need that time for each other, for ourselves. Um, so um, during, so another experience um, at Davis is that I am a work study student. So I've been able to like work with like transfer opportunity program on campus. So I'm a student coordinator. So I work one-on-one -on -one with transfer students um, from Northern um, Community College region. So it's pretty cool. Like, um, to be able to do that because there's many like work study positions available and maybe it'd be something that you're interested in which could also add to your resume and to your future potential job so that since i want to go into education so i was seek out something that is involved in education so if you're like a med student or you're like a law student you want to probably get a work study position that involves that to add to your resume and not only that but like unique individuals that if you're a med student and you have a work study, they could be like, hey, you know, I could recommend you to like such and such place and that would be your recommender. Like, or they could write your letters of recommendations. And that's pretty dope. And um, another thing that I've done is like family a leader. So so in Luna, so and also like I um am like I participate in like panels. So I'm like a UC, UC Davis representative. So that's a really cool aspect where it's like because I have the top position. Um, I'm able to like not only represent UC Davis but UC wide. So I've been on like panelists like representing like UC wide and like sharing information in my transfer experience. So I just want to talk a little bit about the transfer experience. Like as Corey was going to like a semester to like a quarter system, it's a little hectic, but it's okay. Like if 
us that we're from like semester to quarter, I was able to do it, y'all be able to do it. So y'all on the clear. But if there's anything that I really want to emphasize is make connections. Like that's really key to like your success. Like there's anything that you don't, you do not know. Like there's individuals are there to help you. Like if there's something you don't, do not know, like don't be afraid to ask. Cause trust me, you're not the only person that's going through it. Um, whether it's like financial situation, mental, like you need tutoring, like you're not doing well in class, you're about to get into probation, like it's okay. Like there's people out there that's like willing to help you. So I highly recommend you like, don't be shy, put yourself out there. It's a little, like for my introverts and whatnot, like just do it. <laughs> like I've been that, I'm like that individual, but I'm just like, you know what? Like if I don't put myself out there and ask like, who's gonna help me, you know? So yeah. Um, I, myself, I'm also a point of contact for any of y'all are interested in UC Davis. So, you know, just feel free to hit me up. <laughs> Wait on to the next person. Thank you so much, Talia. Alrighty, our next panelist, uh, Jean. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, but yeah, take it away. What's up? Um, I'm Jean. I'm a fourth year African-American studies major <clears throat> with a minor in education at UCLA. Um, yeah, some of the, the biggest, or, okay, I'll start with Vips. Um, so in my time at UCLA, or I guess when I first started at UCLA, I thought I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and so a lot of the stuff, like a lot of the extracurricular activities I did were like centered around that um, and just trying to like get like experience. Um, and so like, that's one piece of advice I would give is like to definitely um, like explore things that you're interested in. Um, I even like, like I changed my major like four or five times um, <laughs> in college. And honestly, I would have changed it again to education, but they didn't let me. Um, so like definitely explore like whatever you're interested in. Um, but yeah, so UCLA VIP Scholars is like a program <clears throat> um, where we work with uh, black high school students throughout LA to like try to help them become like competitive for schools like UCLA, um, like USC and, you know, just like different schools like that. Um, and so that's been like really rewarding and it kind of like taught me that or just kind of showed me that like I definitely want to work in education um, and you know it was just like really fulfilling like helping people like get into college and things like that um, <clears throat> and then McNair scholars so McNair is a it's like a trio it's like a federal trio program so similar to like upward bound um, I know that, yeah that's the only other trio program I know there's like a few more um, but yeah, so it's like a, it's kind of basically like upward bound, but for like college and if you're trying to go to grad school. So McNair's, it's a like a research program um, where they like kind of give you like a stipend every quarter to, and they support you um, to like do like your own like research project. So it, it basically like at UCLA, it, turn, it comes out to be like a, a thesis, like a senior thesis. Um, and so also with that, they like, give you support um, with like the grad school application process. So like you have like current grad students um, kind of like walking you through everything and, and even like GRE prep, which <laughs> I did terrible on, but um, it didn't really matter that much this year because of the COVID. Um, and a lot of schools are just starting to recognize that standardized tests are like not good like measures of someone's like, you know, like ability or like future potential or whatever. Um, but yeah, McNair was is has been super influential for me because, um, like I said, I wanted to be a teacher when I first started college. Um, but McNair kind of showed me that I could, I was cap I could like do research and that it was like attainable to like get a PhD, um, which is something I didn't really see myself ever <laughs> ever really doing. Um, like when I got into college, just I just like I didn't really care about my GPA that much because I was like I'm not really going to go to grad school. I'm just gonna you know, do my four years of undergrad and then like get my teaching credential. Um, but McNair kind of changed my like, um, my like aspirations. And so, yeah. So yeah, I just applied to like PhD programs in the fall and I got into uh, UT Austin and UCLA. So I'll be, hopefully if UCLA gives me decent fi financial aid, I'll be um, going to UCLA to get my PhD in education. Um, and then Advice, um, so yeah, I guess like, yeah, so I know like, well, yeah, I, I think a lot of schools have McNair um, and even if you like aren't interested in like McNair, like, I don't know if you wanna do other research programs um, cause I know McNair's like focused on humanities, I think, and like social science. 
um, like I would recommend getting like looking into research programs, if, um, exploring like that if you want to get your master's or PhD. Um, and just in general, like even if you want to go to like law school, like look into programs that like will support you along the way and help you like navigate that. Because I think um, like, yeah, I, I didn't really have anyone to really help me navigate like the grad school process. Um, like my mom, she's like a college counselor. So she was really helpful with like the college app process, but she went to grad school like 30 years ago. So like she couldn't really help me with that. Um, so I would just say like lean on people, find like a support system that can help you navigate whatever you're trying to do. Um, and then advice just to bet on yourself and like believe in yourself, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my mom. Um, like, yeah, wh whatever you want to do, like definitely like, like just bet on yourself and believe that you can do it. I think like a lot of people, a lot of times I would hear like, uh, no, you can't, you can't like go straight into a PhD program. Um, like a lot of people, a lot of like my mentors were saying, telling me like, no, um, you know, you have to get your master's first. And I think I was just hella stubborn and I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to do this first. And so, um, you know, I just tried to like find like resources and stuff um, to like make sure that I could do it and like help me get there. But yeah, just like believe in yourself. Don't take no for an answer. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for that advice already. So next, Alexis. Hi, so my name is Alexis Nodden and I'm a current senior at Northwestern University, which is in Evanston, in Evanston, Illinois. So it's just slightly north of Chicago. And I'm a communication studies and global health studies major, which I've also kind of like Jean, I've had a couple different majors um, during college. So if anyone has questions about choosing majors or changing majors, I'll be happy to answer them. And then some extracurriculars and um, activities I've done since being at Northwestern is I was um, a part of In Unites, which is a club that um, provided free programming for undergrad students pretty weekly. So we would do like st um, stress relief events during like midterms and final seasons. We'd, we'd also like get tickets to go to like Halloween Horror Fest at, for Six Flags for the ones they have in, out in Illinois or like go see Broadway musicals and stuff like that. Um, and I was the VP of marketing for that. And then I'm also part of Community Health Corps, um, which is a club that focuses on um, achieving health equity in the Evanston community and um, providing a lot of like resources and um, showing um, members of the Evanston community how to um, look through and navigate like the healthcare system, healthcare resources within the community. And then I'm also a books and breakfast tutor. So it's a program that tutors, I did elementary school and now I'm currently at middle schools at Evanston. And then we focus primarily on um, minority or minority students and um, hoping to achieve um, education equity within um, the Evanston D65 school. So we offer a lot of academic support, but also social support. And it's a good place to um, build relationships and help them navigate going through school. And then I'm also a research assistant at the Griffith Lab, which is part of the medical social science um, department at Northwestern's Graduate Medical School. And so I've been there for over a year and um, I work on um, like health literacy projects, also doing other projects on dementia, um, other um, types of like illnesses and analyzing. So it's a lot of schedule, like participant interaction with that one. Um, which I was never interested in research before. And I was like, what the heck, just because Northwestern is a research institution and I felt everyone around me was doing research. Um, and I did think it was a lot of test tubes and beakers, which is the opposite of what I'm doing. So I actually really like it a lot more than I thought I would. And then one resource I would say, um, there's a couple of them, but I really love campus inclusion and community, which it's kind of like the head um, diversity program at our school. It also oversees like the multicultural student affairs and um, student economic enrichment services, um, especially since Northwestern is a primarily white institution. Um, that's like CIC is a great resource um, for having to um, like navigate and find um, other people from like your own like backgrounds, um, whether that could be race, ethnicity, um, sexuality, um, income level and other um, ways you might identify, um, especially since I'm a posse scholar, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but we work closely to them. Um, so like we're pretty close with the directors and stuff and they will definitely fight for you. Um, 
across like just academic, um, whether like you need teachers are being super unhelpful, um, especially navigating the pandemic, like they will definitely fight for you, they'll fight for getting you resources and anything you may need or offering support. Um, so definitely we re re recommend them or um, any equivalent at the school you're looking for. And then La uh, well, two falls ago now, back in 2019, I got to study abroad in Paris and I did a pub I studied public health in Europe and it was for my global health major. So if anyone's thinking about study studying abroad or just wants to learn more about studying abroad, I'll be happy to talk about it. Um, and then I'm also a Posse scholar. So I got a four year um, full tuition scholarship to go to Northwestern um, and how it worked was at the beginning of my senior year um, you have to be nominated for it whether that's by someone at your school or by a, a previous posse scholar and you go through three rounds of interviews so there is um, the first round and then there's like a, which is kind of just like a general round then the second round is a one-on-one -on -one. then um, that's where you pick um, like your top five or so partner schools because within posse LA they have like different partner schools um, that you, like scholars could go to and then for your final round, they match you up with one. And that's how I was matched up with Northwestern. And then from that round, I think there's about 20 or so people in the final round, then they pick 10 students um, to be like the actual posse. And then from January to July of your senior year, like you go through like weekly trainings um, and it's to prepare you for college, but also to get closer with your posse. And then um, on, once you're on campus, we, you do like different events and um, programming and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so um, that's about it, I would say. Thank you so much, Alexis. Alrighty, 